Hello uh, Shrikar how are you doing I'm good how are you how are you Sagar very well Shrikar uh, so Shrikar you are the manager of Arjun who is now uh, India number 2 who's doing phenomenally well so could hey. you tell us how did this association begin and uh, how did you get in touch with him are you connected with chess did you play chess a little bit about yourself <laughs> no no i i am um... not at all connected with chess i come from a completely different world of entrepreneurship and startups and brands and business and um, so one of my friends uh, manu gotu you might be knowing him um, he said i mean he's a big fan of chess mm-hmm. um, and he said hey you know uh, there are these kids there is this talent uh, who needs some help on the business and the brand uh, side of things to get some endorsements get some uh, sponsorships um and uh, i started speaking i think the first player i spoke to was shrina and from there he kind of opened the flood gates and then i spoke with uh, almost everyone one of them being arjun um and that's how i got introduced to arjun uh one of the things that clicked initially was that uh, arjun speaks telugu and even i speak telugu ah. so that that was that was a good connect uh, <laughs> to start out with um i have a background in sports playing sports uh, a little bit of managing uh, working with a few teams uh, but not as much and chess so was i'm really far away from chess hmm. um which sport were you playing uh initially I, i used to play a lot of cricket okay but uh, but yeah i played a lot of football and badminton mm-hmm. swimming so i got involved in a lot of things okay so yeah. so your uh, talent management company that you have now uh, does it have only arjun as a chess player or there are more chess players as well uh no we've got uh, arjun we've got srinath uh we've got adiban um we've got uh, surya um and we will have a couple more wonderful uh, which we will, <laughs> uh, we will be announcing pretty soon what what is the name of your company so our company is called mgd1 mgd1 uh, yes w- what, MGD1. Does what does it mean what does it mean it it actually comes from so it comes from manu gurtu ah. mg and his wife divya d okay and we just wanted to i mean manu wanted to make it sound cool so he just came up with mgd1 okay um and uh, i just went along with it because i found it cool <laughs> so right. so that's how that's how that's that's the story behind the name no deep meaning behind it So, so are there um, only chess players? You mentioned there are four to five chess players now. Are there players from other sports as well whom you manage? Ah, uh, no. Uh, when once we got into chess, we realized that you know, uh, there is quite a large scope out here. There is a lot of talent. There is a lot of opportunity. Um, there are a lot of problems and misalignments as well, which we feel can be resolved uh, uh, through. sponsorship through better management through marketing um and we thought of focusing our entire energy on on chess itself and then you know i started playing a little bit of chess myself um and uh, i got really really involved in it okay um i found it very interesting i find it very interesting to follow uh, follow the games um i follow your channel as well uh, Oh, kind no, of, you know, it kind of simplifies chess for me to understand what's happening real time wonderful that's great to know that a uh, you know dedicated company uh, is working yeah. for chess players and i think that's uh, really the need of the hour because i guess there are so many talented youngsters who are not yeah. able to get sponsors and i mean arjun who is now world number 18 india number 2 was also struggling for quite some time to get sponsors is that still the right. case or has thing have things improved things have improved definitely they've improved um but uh, chess so here's the kind of problem chess doesn't have the eyeballs that brands are looking for um the brands are looking for mass market eyeballs and uh, chess unfortunately doesn't have it as yet hmm. it's changing um 
and the other thing is it's very important to have some kind of brand alignment when it comes to sponsorship what i mean by brand alignment is um uh, chess and chess players are con- considered intellectual it's an intellectual mental athlete mental sport um so even the brands that need to be approached for sponsorship should have that kind of brand positioning mm. which is an intellectual brand something like an investment firm something like an educational firm correct uh, if you go to parleji and say hey you know kind of sponsor chess that 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 might actually work with <laughs> with what parleji has right. but you know what i mean well generally so, all brands like to connect with intellect i guess in some way many of the brands but perhaps uh, or not everyone or is that the case um not not all brands uh, are interested in you know the intellectual positioning okay uh, if intellectuality is something that they want to go for uh, they will like to align with it and then you know they have to be kind of niche as well the kind of audience that chess has in general does that target market fit the target market of Correct. a certain brand that also needs to be taken care of and then the other side of sponsorship is csr um where a certain percentage of a company's profits have to be put into csr and sports comes under csr and that is why you see uh, tata jsw entering this in the past decade right and uh, that is one way to kind of go about it so i'm trying both ways uh, to get into it jsw is one of the people that we are uh, in talks with um adidas is another um, brand that we are in talks with um recently uh, in shorts is something that uh, mm-hmm. uh, was interested um so these are all initial level talks uh, we are hoping that you know uh, it will kind of end up in 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 thing into something uh, positive well generally for for a player like arjun i believe that who is playing at this level the costs yeah. are many right because yeah. he has to travel to tournaments he also has to have high class training i think that is yeah. one of the major costs do you think that prize money on its own can sustain a career for a player like him uh honestly no um i feel a player of arjun's caliber uh and arjun's potential and arjun's grit uh and uh, his ability of course um i feel arjun has a very good chance of being one of the candidates uh even and you know even eventually be the world champion Correct. that we are looking for from india absolutely um one of the first things that i uh, ask arjun usually when i speak with the players one of the first uh, questions that i ask is uh, what is your goal or what is your aim mm. uh you've come to me with a certain at a certain juncture uh and the first question that i asked arjun was what is your aim and he said i want to be the world champion and now an 18 year old looking at you in the eye and saying i want to be the world champion that doesn't happen every single day mm. um and then from there i have to kind of back calculate back track and see you know how many steps are involved in this and like you said you know you mentioned that you know the coaching and the training takes up a lot of uh, of investment uh the investment is not just of it's not just financial investment but you know the bandwidth of the player itself um emotional and intellectual um and, and then you have the travel the stay the the all of that and then at the same time you have to kind of take care of the brand and the the marketing and the general management uh, whether that's the calendar the scheduling and things like that uh so uh, in sponsorship also we've kind of broken it down into these three parts which is one part is the training which kind of takes up most of the will take up most of the sponsorship um close to 50% of the sponsorship will go into the training aspect of it around 30% will go into the uh, the you know the travel and stay 
while uh, you know the last 20% will be left for uh, for the management and the marketing aspect of arjun mm. and uh, having said that when i'm speaking to sponsors i'm saying that you know you when you're sponsoring look at it like a five year goal or a three year goal don't just look at it look at it like you know a one year thing i will sponsor today and then you know that that is more like an expense look right. at it like an investment um arjun has has a higher probability of becoming the world champion i'm not saying this would be a guarantee no, guaranteed sure. investment nahi hai ye ki you sponsored the player and he becomes the world champion uh but he has a higher probability at this and this this is the message that that time uh, uh, uh you know this is how i'm taking the conversation forward with the sponsors that you will be part of this 3 year or 5 year long or or maybe longer growth story and would you you know be uh, would you like to be part of this growth story um so so i i certainly would want to be part of this growth story uh, so <laughs> uh so yeah that, this is where the conversation is at right now and generally like if a brand attaches itself with arjun like for example in chess we have this very nice example of vishy anand and niit it's kind of you know stuck in the head like when we think Absolutely. of anand we think of niit he's wearing this on his shirt blue shirt he's playing at the world championship he's winning he gives simuls he's wearing their sh- uh, shirt and moving around uh right do you see that as the major value for a brand uh i mean you said it right i mean when you say vishnathan anand uh what brand comes to mind you know it's it's that simple mm. uh even though um, i don't think niit still sponsors vishnathan anand right. but uh, you still remember the you still remember the brand you still I, I still remember, remember the sachin's mrf you know his bat Absolutely. all in so i think maybe that is what you are looking for for arjun as that well. yes 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 N- not in terms of the viewership of chess and the eyeballs but more on the identity and association part of it where you are with uh, with the talent with the player uh, through the ups and downs and part of the entire kind of growth story um, and eventually when when someone thinks of that player they immediately think of the brand mm. or whenever they think of the brand they immediately know you know who the the sponsored player or the ambassador of this uh, brand is fantastic and what would you say are the qualities of arjun that you have liked a lot and that makes him into this champion that he is he's so un- unassuming when you talk to him he's very calm he's very cool but as he told you he wants to become a world champion he has this determination in him uh, i yeah. i think that is one of his key qualities have you seen more uh, about him that you could share with us yeah so i spent i spent some personal time with him as well i visited his hometown met his parents um because it becomes very important to understand what environment the player is coming from to understand the player a lot more right. um and one of the greatest things i think arjun has is the ability to listen mm-hmm. uh and when i'm saying listen i just no don't mean hear he will listen and he will listen and process it slowly and he takes his time with all of it and uh, i'm sure that shows in the the chess part of it as well but i'm talking all the non chess related things he's a very good listener he um and that kind of gives him time to um you know make up his mind he buys time he doesn't uh, listen to respond uh, i mean listen to react he listens to respond and when when he decides to respond he responds then he won't respond immediately to anything got it and uh, and of course you know the rest of the rest of the characteristics of arjun are quite evident uh he's humble soft spoken and and grit and determination and his ambition is quite evident um his ability is evident all of that is evident is evident but but the greatest kind of you know quality that i noticed in arjun is that he listens 
and he listens and he can listen for really really long time and he has this habit uh, you might have noticed actually like if you're saying something he if he's deeply involved in what you're saying he will say go on go on because he wants to listen more mm-hmm. and uh, and that is a that is amazing for an for an 18 year old or a 19 year old uh, to have that kind of uh, you know ability i mean i remember myself when i was 18 19 i was the last person who was listening to anyone <laughs> true wow oh, these were some very nice uh, insights and i think um, you you knowing arjun well is one of the most important things because if this goes on and you want to get more uh sponsorships for him you are his manager i think that bond right. between the manager and uh, the player is very important right right it's very important as in you know one of the things that i uh, spoke with uh, arjun's parents also i said you know um i have gotten into chess or or the business of chess as i, I would put it um uh, about a year ago okay i have no background in chess i don't come from the same circuit i am a i am a complete outsider why and arjun is i mean nobody to me why should arjun even trust me you know an outsider a non chess person is coming and saying that hey man i will help you out with whatever why should even arjun trust me at this point and initially it took me a lot of time to to build that trust and i'm still it's happening you know uh, and and vice versa why should arjun trust me why should i trust arjun uh, for that matter um so i think it's it's more of a journey uh, uh, managing someone um uh, and you know you can do as much as possible to make the steps easier for someone make them uh, bringing clarity of thought to whatever is required but eventually the person has to kind of walk those, mm. those steps um um in arjun's case uh, i i being the person kind of you know creating those steps whatever are required and then arjun kind of walking that path um and apart from that you know uh, the other thing is uh, slowly but surely arjun and i are are becoming friends mm. and i mean arjun's 19 and i am 34 <laughs> you know my the references that i give him he doesn't understand them and half the time when when he doesn't understand them i have to explain the reference as well you know of a joke also um and then arjun shares his kind of thoughts and you know whatever he's going through and um, Uh, so so that's a completely different side of you know uh, managing arjun that i kind of go through every single day it has nothing to do with chess absolutely nothing to do with chess it has everything to do with life right um and that's i think i'm enjoying that part a lot more <laughs> <laughs> fantastic so so personally before coming into chess uh, what what are your educational qualifications and were you working before somewhere uh so i have never worked as in uh, i have never uh, done a job uh i've got a post grad in marketing and i do this thing um i started off as a writer um and um, then i started uh, working with businesses consulting them with their marketing sales branding uh, initiatives uh, got involved into startups um over the years i got the opportunity to be part of multiple startups as a co-founder or as a consultant and um, eventually reaching here uh, with this i consider this also as a startup right uh, in the world of chess um, and uh, i've been doing this for about about over a decade now almost a, over a decade and um, and you know the fundamentals of business kind of remain the same uh, irrespective of what domain the business is in of course um, 
when it comes to chess i have to understand chess a little bit but then you know having a sports background i kind of understand discipline i understand drive i understand the uh, the pain of loss right i right. understand the learning aspect of it uh, so that was easy and chess has such a such a low entry barrier to learning chess i mean all you need is a chess board and a correct uh, and sometimes you don't even need that you just need an app and you start playing um so learning chess uh learning how the world of chess functions kind of took some time uh but the fundamentals of business or, or how a startup kind of functions how sponsorship functions how endorsement brands function it remains the same across mm-hmm. the board and um, so I, i think that's an advantage that i'm bringing to the world of chess itself um you know, along with my partner uh where we are bringing the aspects of business and brands to chess um which is very much the need of the hour mm. um i hope just like us a lot more uh companies enter the world of chess because um i think it's a billion dollar opportunity mm. this, this um, is what i wanted to ask you that you have yeah, so much experience yeah. of different businesses now that you are mm. in this chess domain do you feel that this is worth your time energy efforts do you see prospects here do you see the sport growing into something huge yes um i took 6 months to decide whether to get into chess uh 6 months of Uh, all the research all the stories all the all the youtube videos even after you know speaking to a few chess players it took me 6 months to finally decide hey you know i see an opportunity i'll tell you how i saw the opportunity i saw problems in chess problems of uh, management problems of sponsorship problems of i mean you know the problems <laughs> yeah but but, but i would uh, love to love to know this research that you did because i think you putting in that time spotting those problems which are like opportunities and then deciding is uh, i think could be very useful to even others who who would listen to you yeah uh so i i saw that you know um currently the world of chess is being run by ex chess players or current chess players as well now that is a good thing as well as that is a bad thing mm. um the good thing is they are very empathetic towards chess players and chess in general which is which is needed i completely support that but the bad thing is uh, most of the chess players that i have known have spent decades uh you know understanding learning improving in chess uh so and what that means unfortunately is that they do not know anything outside chess mm-hmm. um and, and whatever they know is hearsay it's not you know actual experience uh, what that does is um it restricts growth in what ways i can tell you is uh, what is is considered to be what will be okay but once you start opening the gates for outsiders to come in when i'm saying outsiders i mean it's not just chess uh, players and chess enthusiasts outside to come in bringing their uh, you know expertise to it whether that is in the form of entertainment whether that is in the form of broadcasting whether that is in the form of business whether that is in the form of um, you know um, it could be anything actually once you let outsiders come in you know that uh, exclusivity of of the circle of chess uh that at at one point kind of starts going away but the circle starts becoming bigger mm-hmm. it starts becoming larger if i am getting involved there might be 10 other people who must be thinking hey let's get involved in chess you know and that's how it starts the domino effect starts there ki you know um the other entrepreneurs that i i am in touch with they are like uh, hey shrikar has gotten involved in chess there might be an opportunity there nice. you know 
and they get involved and then some something else happens and then some and then the correcting the dots kind of thing happens but till the time the the you know it is completely walled you know or guarded off from the outside world um that is not going to help chess uh, and that is not going to help uh, uh, you know others as well in general uh, so i believe that you know of course there needs to be uh, some kind of hygiene that needs to be maintained in terms of chess but i think more people from various walks of life should get involved in chess and um, people who are currently involved in chess should also be okay right uh, with having others come in uh, you know because one of the things that happens and i've noticed this is uh, uh, that people uh, who from the outside who want to kind of come in one of the first things they are asked is you know hey uh, do you play chess and you know how what's your elo is, <laughs> yeah what's your elo and and what that does is it kind of puts you on the spot and you don't want to reveal your elo because i mean correct you're not great at it so you're like hey how can i reveal my elo in front of this this person and that that shyness and that embarrassment actually stops a lot of people mm-hmm. uh from entering uh i mean it doesn't matter what your elo is if if you are a chess enthusiast and in any way you can help chess uh in general um i mean you should be uh, welcomed with open arms and thankfully i got welcomed like that right um and that that's when i saw that you know it has it has crazy potential um to to go beyond what it is right now uh i, I read somewhere that you know a billion people in the world uh, play chess or have played chess uh, yeah. sometime in their life um and and that's that's good enough for me it's a billion people market if not a billion dollar market right right this is this is tremendous speaker talking to you i think has been uh, wonderful i'm also amazed that uh, a person with your kind of experience and exposure decided to now spend time in chess powering it i myself believe the same as you do that chess has huge potential and will become uh, one of the biggest sports in the country uh, and and uh, talking to you has reinforced that feeling so thank you so much <laughs> thank you so much sagar for having me